Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Tuesday, June 12th school board meeting. Um, this is our business meeting. We have a lengthy agenda, so let's get started with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our new school board rep, Nolan Morris. Um, he was elected last week, and um, Abby Donnelly has also agreed to continue with us for another year. So um, thank you both for um, uh, agreeing to come and represent the high school and sit with the board during our meetings. Uh, I'd also like to ask, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Um, I would like to strike from the agenda, um, hold on a sec, I'll find it since it's such a short agenda. It's on page, <laughs> it's on minute, page I got, I 13. Page 5, item F. Page 5, well, I, I'd like to do it the proper way. 5, okay, 7. F on page five, consideration to approve the following job descriptions. I would like to have that tabled and uh, heard at a uh, the next meeting or a, an appropriate meeting for those. There's a lot of questions about those job descriptions and suggested changes, and I think it should be done um, at a later time when we have more time to talk about it. Okay. Um, sh should we make a motion for that? Or? Uh, I moved it. I, I, I moved that we table. Okay. I'm a, whatever I said, seven F. Okay. For a later okay. meeting. Do I have a second? All those in favor? Great. All right. We will move those. Um, I know that we announce uh, business meeting, upcoming meetings, uh, in at the end of the agenda, but um, we will be having a special business meeting on Wednesday, next Wednesday, which is the twentieth. Um, at 4.30 p.m. to um, 4 o'clock. That's right, 4 o'clock um, p.m. to um, deal with this item and a couple of other items. So the, the agenda will be posted, and um, that's when we'll take up um, the job descriptions. So thank you, David. Um, we have a lengthy uh, list of school board minutes to look at. Um, should we do these as a slate? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? I move that we approve the school board minutes as a slate in item two on our agenda for this evening. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? I have one, um, uh, one thing I would like changed, uh, Meredith. On the May 22nd meeting, it says that we met in the William um, Jordan Conference Room in Town Hall, and that was in the high school library. Okay. Anything else? Okay, with that adjustment, all those in favor? Seven zero. All right, comments by student reps. Do we have students? I know. I thought you guys were in high school. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Gabby. And I'm Eva. And this is our final meeting as a middle, as middle school representative. Tomorrow is our last day of school. The year wrapped up very nicely. Yesterday was step up day, and eighth graders received their schedules for next year. Today was beach day. The eighth graders went to Old Orchard Beach, and all the other grades went to Scarborough. All funds and uniforms were supposed <coughs> to be turned to our school by today. Tomorrow we will have a half day. Thank you, and we hope to speak here again sometime soon. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. High school student reps. Okay. Um, uh, I'll just talk. Um, so the year has wrapped up, 
at the high school. Today was the last day of finals. Tomorrow's a makeup day, but um, graduation was on Sunday, and we had beautiful weather for that. My shoulders got very sunburned, but um, and they had project graduation as well, which I believe was at they went bowling mm -hmm. to an indoor adventure park, and then a, a dance was held for them by Mr. Filio, I believe. I believe so. Um, which I heard was very fun. And iPads, we have to give those back, which is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> a little Pretty bit sure of withdrawal. That, yeah. Noah? Um, well, I guess other than that, we, we've had finals. Uh, the seniors are gone from the school, or have been gone for the past uh, couple weeks. Uh, they've finished up their STPs. Um, and we also, we've also received our uh, next year's schedules. Uh, I think everything went pretty smoothly with that. Um, yeah. Thank you, high school reps. All right, so let's move on to comments from the public on agenda items. Any comments from the public on agenda items? Seeing none, we will move on to item number five, recognition, um, world language national exams. Hi, um, I'm Susan Dana, Spanish teacher at the middle school, and Lisa Leonard and I are here tonight to talk about um, the results of the National French Contest and the National Spanish Exam, and we're really representing the, um, the middle school world language team. Um, earlier this spring, some of our middle school students participated in the National French Contest and the National Spanish Exam. These national academic competitions are sponsored by the American Association of French Teachers and the American Association of Spanish and Portuguese Teachers. Uh, their purpose is to promote the study of world languages and to recognize excellent language students. The majority of the students who participate are in high school, but there are some middle schools who administer these competitions, and CEMS has participated for, the, for more than 20 years. Our students are invited to take the test based on their numerical averages and performances in their middle school French or Spanish classes. And about 20 to 25 percent of our students are selected to take the, uh, the exam, or actually it's a competition, but um, it's an honor to be selected to participate in these. Um, we recently received the results, and I'm going to talk about the Spanish scores, and then Lisa Leonard will talk about the French scores. Fifteen CEMS Spanish students took the National Spanish exam in April. They're part of the 33,759 students who took the level one exam nationwide, and some will receive special awards of recognition. They're actually going to be receiving these tomorrow during the award ceremony at the middle school. Um, f four eighth graders received silver awards for placing in the top 90% nationwide. Braden Crosta and Rachel Epstein, who also both tied for eighth place in the state of Maine. Alex Narvarez uh, will also receive a silver award for being the top 90%. He placed 10th in the state of Maine, and Sarah O'Connor placed 11th in the state of Maine. Tess Haller and Randy Zell received bronze awards for placing in the top 20% nationally, and the following students will be receiving honorable mentions for placing in the top 35% nationally. This is in the Spanish exam. Catherine Briggs, Tori Diaz, Marcus Donnelly, Will Gibson, Chloe Gillian, Taylor Hansen, Katie O'Sullivan, and Ali Stewart. Kevin Cessna Buscemi, who's the national director of the exam, says, attaining a medal or honorable mention for any student on the national Spanish examination is very prestigious because the exams are the largest of their kind in the United States, with 143,641 students participating in 2012. That's in levels one through five. But, so anyway, that's the Spanish results. And now Lisa will talk about French. Susan. OK, so I'm Lisa and I'm going to talk about the French. Uh, we had 26 students who took this exam. Oh, they call it a contest, so it sounds more, like more fun. Um, but <laughs> don't be mistaken, it is a test. Um, and the, great, the results are great. We had one silver um, medal, and she actually got first in the state and third in the nation. So uh, that's uh, Hazel Pine. And then we had 10 bronze medals. Um, that means that they were top 10 in the nation. And those names are Annie Ball, Haley Fawcett, Lauren Holmes, Ellen Mistrovich, uh, Aaron Whitcomb, James Bottomley, Emma Dvorsniak, Hannah Glazier, Alex Mukai, Dana Dufresne Bonoff, and Natalie Vaughn. Um, so 
and the rest of them, the remaining 14, placed in the top 25 in the nation, top 20 in the state. Now, if you're doing your math and saying there are 26 and that's 25 and that doesn't add up, you're right. It's because there are ties. So that's, that's how that happens. We um, participate in two categories. One A, that was the category I just talked about, but there's also one B, which is a category for someone uh, who may have more experience in French. And that person, Roman Medina, did really well as well. He came in seventh in Maine and ninth in the nation. So he did super duper as well. Um, I just wanted to read the other names of the, the uh, children who were in the, uh, the other 14 kids. And they are Stephen Bennett, Montana Braxton, Kate Breed, Maddie Connolly, Eden Divney, Jared DePair, Jana Friedman, Carter Harvey, Brandon Ledoux, Megan Nicholson, Harry Queenie, Will Steidel, and Mackie Wood. So anyway, we're really proud of them um, on behalf of their teachers over the last uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six years. Suzanne Janelle, Conrad Berthume, and, and me, we're really proud of them. Thank you. And Susan, may I ask that you just leave me or email me the copy of the list so that Andrea can save a little time in transcribing all of that. Any questions from the board or comments? I guess I have a, a question. Mm -hmm. Is, do you teach to the test or are you just teaching and the, and the love of the language comes out and therefore... We do not teach to We don't teach to the test. We do get uh, some information about what's on the test, but quite honestly, uh, I don't really, I don't really, I mean, I look at it, uh, but I don't go and say, okay, you need to know this, that, and the other thing, and I think Susan's the same thing. We do practice with them. If they're, if they're interested, we offer practice sessions, and some of them come and some of them don't. Thank you. I know. Well, th Thank you. I think this speaks to like, the, the strength of our world language. Those who were on the board when you all presented your curriculum, um, you have a fantastic team of teachers. And um, so thank you for your dedication and um, you know, instilling that love of language in, in kids. I'm excited to see how, because most of these are eighth, <coughs> or these are eighth graders, so they're going on um, you know, into high school, and we'll see how they, how they progress. And, um, thanks for the opportunity. Well, thank you for your support. Thank you. Okay, on to retirees. We have a, a notable list. Um, and where should we start, Meredith? Um, well, we can start at the top, I guess. There are people <laughs> um, here, from, here from various departments who are going to speak a little bit about each person. And then um, okay. the board is going to recognize and uh, provide certificate so if we want to do that as we go along sure I'm not sure what you've done in the past but right. that works for me all right so let's start with Karen Allen Karen Allen has been an integral part of um, building the institution that community services is today 26 years ago, Karen started as a receptionist secretary in the department. She followed by being the youth programs coordinator, then the senior programs coordinator, and finally the adult programs coordinator. During this time, community services has moved five times as we settled into different spaces in the schools. Before finding our, our final resting place, hopefully, in the um, community center 10 years ago this August. Although Karen has always been good with details associated with the job, it's been the people part of the job that is the part of the position that she likes the best. She enjoys getting to know all of our patrons of all ages, infants to seniors, and everyone in between. Of course, the senior population has always had that very special place for her in her heart. She has spent untold hours figuring out the details associated with luncheons, day excursions, and overnight trips. Of course, as she headed off to each exciting location in Maine, New England, Canada, and even Italy, she always took a moment to remind all of us left behind that she really was working the whole time she was gone. <laughs> For the last 20 years, Karen has been coveting the solid um, maple engraved heritage chairs that the town employees received for 25 years of service. 
So on June 5th, with a very small gathering, Community Services recognized Karen by providing her with her own Community Services Heritage Chair. So tonight, thank you for recognizing Karen and all of her years of commitment and dedication to the community. Um, I don't see Karen here, um, but I know she'll ap appreciate this. We'll be glad. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And next up is Gary Lenoy, and I am the designee, I think, because um, there are only two other people in the district who've been working here as long as Gary. Um, so no one wanted to take on this particular challenge. Um, Gary started in the district, I won't tell you exactly how many, but um, uh, many <laughs> years ago as an industrial arts teacher. And Gary um, has been here and taken on the role of technology coordinator. Um, where he has served um, us very well. Gary is a founding member of Actum. He has been in Maine from um, the days of overhead projectors uh, <laughs> um, through to, and, and there are still a few of those around, I might add, but um, through, through the uh, Milty laptop initiative, and he has moved us into the world of iPads and cloud computing. Um, his job has grown from a time when he was the sole technician serving the needs of the district to include servicing all of the town, um, and right up through VoIP telephone systems. Um, Gary now, as the coordinator, oversees a staff of three technology integrators, three technicians, a data manager, and a website manager. He has grown through the years in his skills as an administrator and educator. He has developed budgets, built the power school system. Gary was a pioneer in developing the first student technology team within the district. Um, one of those former students who worked with him honing his skills may or may not be, we're not allowed to say, say working with the Department of Defense now as an adult. Um, <laughs> Clearly, if you think about the innovations that have occurred in technology over the last three plus decades, um, things have changed dramatically. And we are so appreciative for the work Gary has done for this district um, during that time, and we will miss him dearly. Gary. Instead of speaking, Gary, you're going to send us an email or something? <laughs> Post it on a blog, something. Um, next up, I believe uh, Tom Eismeyer will be recognizing Janet Amberger. Good evening. Just a few personal words about Janet. I think you all know she's been, what, 15 years at Pond Cove and a, a third grade teacher for most of that time. Personally, I have to admit, I was quite taken aback when Janet told me that she was going to retire. It was all for selfish motives, but in thinking about it, I realized I might have been reacting on behalf of the whole school because she provided so much stability and balance during her time here. Before Janet signed on to Ponco, she uh, worked in another district. There are other districts in Maine, and this gave her a solid foundation and the strength, I think, and the gumption, I should add, not to be taken in by appearances or fads. No matter what the term for the latest teaching methods or curriculum content, Janet rightfully asked, demanded, and I admire her for that, demanded to know what does this mean for my instruction or our instruction. Janet's also famous upon Cove for examining proposals, initiatives, changes in schedules, you name it, by saying yes, and I have a question. It was a pet project of mine to get Janet to say yes and instead of yes but, but I think I've accomplished it. On a more serious side, Janet asks questions that everybody wants to ask, but sometimes they don't dare to do that. And I think we've come to rely on that over the years. I'm not the only one dependent on that, on that trait of, trace of Janet's, and I hope in her absence other people will step up and do that. And because she has been what we call a critical friend, always over the years, providing honest, valuable feedback, not just to me, but to everyone else who will listen. I should hasten to say that Janet 
is always, always, always willing to listen to feedback herself, and that's a real strength in anybody. She always checked with me informally and formally to keep me in the loop with good things that were going on and the occasional problem that arose, just to give me a heads up, because these problems do arrive, arise occasionally. But I never had to intervene, because she always took care of it. Every year at placement time, uh, you know I do this, I ask parents what kind of classroom, which is interpreted as teacher, they would like their children to have. And the answer in balance is that they want a kind, nurturing, understanding, and supportive teacher who will also provide a lot of structure to bring out the best in their children. That's Janet. Janet's the prototypical teacher. It wasn't just in the classroom that Janet made her mark. She's done excellent work as a team leader, a job that gets more demanding all the time. She worked tirelessly on school and district curriculum projects, or well, maybe she did get tired once in a while, and, and, and curriculum development. Whether she knew it or not at the time, her commitment to connecting theory to practice anchored those meetings. Uh, just to add one more memorable Janet Amberger contribution, she always made us date the curriculum drafts. <laughs> A simple way to keep track of things that um, actually had more impact than she realized. Even though Janet has put a lot of time and energy into her teaching, she still managed to have a life outside of school with her horses, dogs, and traveling. So Janet, you and Larry will now have time to expand and enjoy those pursuits even more. All of us at Pond Cove wish you the very best with all this. We'll miss you, but I think you've left quite a legacy. Thank you, Janet. invite Linda Alfiero up to recognize Tom Eismeyer. Hi. Hi, Linda. I'd like to say a few words on behalf of our departing Pond Cove principal after 17 years, and that sounds like a long time, and it can probably feel that way, depending upon the situation that you're in. However, you know, five years, 10 years, 17 years can go by in a couple of big leaps when you work in public education. And sometimes the passing of time can be measured by, you know, thinking about the children that we've worked with. For example, I might be saying hi to a young person at the IGA who's ringing up my purchase, and I think, gosh, he resembles that kindergartner I taught a couple years ago. And then I realize, wait, <laughs> he is that kindergartner I taught many years ago. It felt like just a few. Time goes by so quickly when you are in our profession. And so reflecting upon the last 17 years um, with Tom as our principal, I realize there have been really some significant areas that he has supported and nurtured over time, which are now an enduring part of the school. And here are a few of the professional legacies that he'll leave at Pond Cove. Early in his tenure, Tom understood that regular staff meetings were an essential component for school growth. So he established a consistent schedule, no easy feat. And that was long before PD Monday afternoons. He recognized that common planning time for grade level staff was another important element, enabling staff to meet regularly with their grade level colleagues to take care of important business, such as curriculum planning, reflection, and improvement of practice based on student achievement. Common planning time was established long before we began to follow the work of the Dufours and Matos and the professional learning community construct. Tom nurtured the development of what we called a teacher assistance team, or TAT as it was known, which is now morphed into our SST or student support team. And at the time, in addition to being able to meet with grade level team colleagues weekly, or during staff meetings, te teachers were able to access the TAT to brainstorm with other professionals in an attempt to try to puzzle out what other actions might be attempted when working through areas of difficulty with a particular student. This was a volunteer effort, and it was well before response to intervention, or RTI, became part of our working language. Another example initially funded by CIF the math lab at Pond Cove School would not exist without Tom's direct support. 
Now, elementary schools the size of Pond Cove usually have a principal and an assistant principal. When the last assistant principal at Pond Cove retired some 10 years ago, and it was decided the position was not to be filled, Tom established a professional learning opportunity for staff aimed at developing leadership capacity, known as the teacher leader. I'm the fourth one. When asked, staff had volunteered that Tom has trusted them to make excellent decisions, but when needing his advice, he's had an open door to help problem solve any issue. The phrase that I hear a lot is, I know Tom has my back. And regarding the personal lives of his staff, Tom has always understood that our own families were our priorities. Family emergencies such as getting a call at school, I've got a sick child, gotta go pick her up, take her to the doctor. Or those of us who are caring for elderly or our infirm parents um, were also priority and have been encouraged to take whatever action we have needed to attend to these priorities, no worries. Our district's youngest learners arrive at school eager to learn and have fun. And they leave school smiling. And that's not by chance. It's a reflection of leadership that encourages and supports the highly dedicated and professional staff, allowing us to take risks and try new things, the most recent I can think of being the Daily Five in the cafe. And it's the support of things like Arts Day, Dr. Seuss Day, Principal for a Day Day, for the children that help to make them love where they're at. So on behalf of the staff, 17 years worth of students and their families, we wish to thank you, Tom, for spending nearly half of your professional career here with us in Cape Elizabeth. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Steve Connolly to recognize Sally Connolly. So um, we had a staff get together the other day at Kathy's house. Just cleared out before the thunder and lightning started, but it worked out quite well. And um, during that, a number of the staff got together and decided that they would put together an album which really kind of captures for us a lot of the things about Sally that people would say, kids, students, colleagues would say, yeah, we know that about Sally. But there's some other things in there that people don't know about Sally. So this might be a good time to share those. What do you think? Excellent. <laughs> I was really delighted when Steve asked me to speak on Sally's behalf. Um, and of course, what do you say about such a fabulous woman? Um, but quickly, the answer came when I realized that Kay Carlonis, who's been teaching with Sally for the last five years, has collected and put together a really stunning scrapbook of memoirs for Sally. So I'd like to share um, some of the comments that our colleagues have included. So um, the first page is a beautiful picture drawn by one of Sally's current students, and the back of it is signed by all of the children that work with her right now. Um, Kate writes, um, we've laughed together until our bellies hurt and water formed in our eyes. We've seen some of the strangest behaviors and some of the sweetest and most generous. Through it all, you've been my rock. You are always positive and smiling, never judging or condescending always a day brightener and forever warm and fuzzy. Um, so Sally, you will be dearly missed by the faculty and students. From Steve, you are the middle school marine biology queen. From now on, in your honor, all of the fifth graders will remember the unit instead of the voyage of the Mimi, the voyage of the Sally. Um, uh, a young teacher, when she first arrived, her reflection is, when I first met you, your friendliness put me at ease right away. 
and made me feel like a part of the CAPE team. I enjoyed the opportunity to teach in your classroom. I mean, I want to read everyone, but I really can't. Okay, here's um, a, a lovely one from Suzanne Ann Janelle, uh, that one of our world language teachers. I will never forget your enthusiastic interpretation of the British commander dispersing the Arcadian families in the reenactment of the deportment, which was an, um, an integrated study that we did in fifth grade one year. Now, come on, that's all the stuff everybody knows. Let's get to this one. No, 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 no. no that, that's private. That's private. Um, dear Sally, Oh, uh, this is just one little stanza. Ref reflecting on the time I've known you is a pleasure. For your friendship these past years has been such a treasure. While I've never actually been a student in your class, given chance to extol your virtues, I'll not take a pass. Um, oh, Sally. May your smile continue to shine in the next phase of your journey. Um, your smile and positive attitude have been like a ray of sunshine at CEMS. Uh, the piece that I put in is an ac acrostic where you use the letters of someone's name and you add little uh, statements. So, Sally Conley, sincere, a trendsetter, fabulous style, loyal, always there, Conscientious, one of a kind, nurturing, science specialist, out of the ordinary, language arts whiz, team leader extraordinaire, you are the best. You need a G in there somewhere for grandma Matisha. Well, that was language arts whiz. Yeah. <laughs> it had to go with the letters. I notice I need a new name tag for the door, don't I? Uh, Did you guys steal her name tag? No, 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 we just took, just took a photo. Yeah. Okay. So obviously I could keep going. Oh, this is a beautiful little piece, just so you'll know. The seventh and eighth grade teachers had every student who had Sally as fifth grade teacher sign a little book. And so all of those signatures are there for her. Um, you've been such a gift to the students, parents, and staff at Cape Elizabeth Middle School. We all need the unfailing compassion and understanding that you have given. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work beside you. And I think I will close with one of my favorite poems. Um, and it goes, um, it's not really a poem, it's really a statement. Making a difference in someone else's life is what gives our existence color, joy, and meaning. And Sally, you have made a huge difference in many, many, many lives. And to close with your words, bless your heart. <laughs> she says that to all of us. Uh, and the last page is Sally's children on a school bus. Um, so, Sally, we love you, and we will all miss you terribly. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> recognized Dwight Ely. I thought I saw him, but he moved. <laughs> it's my pleasure to uh, recognize Dwight and just say a few words about him. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is just sort of focus on a few things that to me represent what Dwight has brought to the high school. Um, many of you know, but some of you may not know, that um, Dwight has served both as a teacher. Uh, I think you've been at the high school for 20, 21, something like that. <laughs> a while. Um, and, but in that time, he has spent, he has, he's worked both as a teacher and then for a period of several years as an assistant principal. Um, so he was assistant principal um, in the late 90s for, I think, four years um, with Pete Dawson when Pete was principal. Um, there are a few things that to me represent uh, what Dwight has brought to the school over his many years of contribution there. And one is uh, something that just finished, uh, and that is the senior transition project. 
which is a project that lasts the last two to three weeks of school for our, for our about-to-be graduates. And I believe I'm accurate that um, Dwight and Pete were the people who brought the senior transition project to the high school. And having had the pleasure of watching um, about a dozen of the presentations this past year, it, every year this time of year, um, it brings back you know, what we're in this for and what this is all about and that what, we and our, what our teachers try to do in the classroom is to prepare students for the life that they're going to be having afterwards. And that project is so instrumental for many, many kids in sort of bringing that home to them. Um, it also gets them out of the building at a time when they would otherwise be energetic and perhaps a little bit distracting. Uh, but but it, it is really very touching and, and, um, and, and encouraging uh, about the work that gets done to listen to some of the stories uh, that the students bring back about their experience with the Senior Transition Project. Um, so Dwight, in his role as assistant principal with Pete, was, brought the project to the school, and Dwight has been on and off uh, one of the teacher coordinators, and that has been true for the last few years. He's been coordinating it and feels incredibly passionately about it, and he's going to be hard to replace in that role among, among many others. So the Senior Transition Project is something that represents something to me which is absolutely Dwight's gift to Cape Elizabeth High School. Another one I think that um, he feels passionately about and represents uh, what he values as a teacher is the constant work that he does with his juniors, particularly uh, in connection with the sometimes dreaded uh, but always educational policy research paper. Um, the third and fourth quarters of the year, it is not uncommon to see Dwight um, outside of his classroom conferencing um, with untold numbers of kids, and that's been sort of a hallmark this, this la the last part of the year for as long as I've been at the high school. In fact, it's not uncommon for me periodically to pass by one week and see him work with a junior, and then the next week I pass by and he's working with the same junior because he will not let those kids off that project until they've learned the skills uh, that the project is, is designed to teach. It's constant repetition um, and, and encouraging and getting the kids to think to think deeply and really bring them to a level of, of understanding. Um, and it, it also is reflective of the fact that what Dwight uh, brings to the classroom uh, is a value of conversation. He wants, he's, he's not just an upfront presenter. He really engages the students in a deep conversation, looks at history or government from different points of view and really wants kids to wrestle. Uh, with the complexity of the issues uh, that uh, folks in the U.S. have faced historically um, and that we face now, um, whether he's teaching government or economics, which he's a very good teacher of as well. And the last thing that I will say is that um, he is a guy who will go out of his way to help kids. Um, one of the things that will walk out of the building when Dwight walks out is he is, I believe, over the last 10 years that I've been principal, the number one uh, recommendation writer for students going on to college. Um, and I'm sure that there are any number of juniors this year who have already nabbed him to get a commitment that he will write for them um, e even in connection with their college applications next year. I see Abby Donnelly on her head and she may be one of them. Um, I think he writes about 40 to 60 of those on average per year and each, each one represents an above and beyond commitment uh, that is uh, a tribute to Dwight's caring attitude that uh, uh, we'll be hard pressed to replace. So congratulations Dwight for your retirement um, and we will miss you. at the podium because he's now going to recognize Charlotte Hanna. Charlotte has been working at the, uh, at, in the Cape Elizabeth school system uh, for quite a long time. Um, and I know she's worked most recently at the high school. Before that, she was in the middle school. And I know she's worked as an elementary teacher as well. I think that was within Cape Elizabeth too, yes? Sixth grade here, first and second elsewhere. Okay, first and second elsewhere. That is very rare to find, is somebody who's taught successfully 
uh, at all three grade levels. Um, and when I first came here, she was actually, her time was split between the middle school and high school. Um, and I won the battle to keep her uh, full-time. Uh, so she's been full-time at the high school for I think the last eight or nine years probably. Um, I will only say about Charlotte that I've had the privilege of going into her classroom many, many times over the years. And one of the things that I know, every time I walk into the classroom, whether she's working with honors advanced algebra kids or students in main learning results math, who are students who struggle the most, is what I will find is a teacher who is teaching incredibly effectively, is incredibly well prepared, and connects really well with students and understands really well what their good teachers have methods and ways of just asking questions to sort of probe to see are the kids really understanding what we're doing and if they don't then good teachers adapt uh, to where students are and that is one of the things that Charlotte is absolutely brilliant at um, and it is a reflection of really the desire that she has to focus on results um, and by gosh the math department at Cape Elizabeth High School um, has gotten results over the years um, and continues to get results um, and we hope that she's prepared uh, the people who are going to be remaining behind to continue to get those results. Uh, a couple of things about Charlotte that I think to me represent what she's brought to the school. Um, she had an idea uh, about eight, seven, eight years ago, I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, uh, we used to have a class uh, for students who came in as ninth graders, which was pre-algebra. Um, and we had a fair number of kids who took pre-algebra. And Charlotte um, actually got, received one of the first grants, I think, uh, in the first year of the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation's existence um, to fund the purchase of a software program called Accelerated Math, which then became the, the heart of a new class that was brought, was begun under her leadership, which, which is known as main learner results math. And the idea is rather than lowering expectations as a school, that we figure out ways to support the most struggling learners by increasing the amount of time and support that they get so that they get to those same high levels of, of, of learning accomplishments. Um, and that to me was the genesis of the idea that is really behind professional learning communities in, in the high school at least, is teams of teachers working together effectively, um, sort of collaborating together closely and efficiently to, get, to help all students learn. Um, and one of the things that is absolutely true of our math department is they are an effective team. Uh, they work together, they argue together. Um, I have seen some of the arguments and they thrash things out, but one of the things that they are always committed to is it's all about students and it's all about getting, getting the results that we want for kids. Um, one thing that I learned that I didn't just recently that I didn't know, because even though I've been in Charlotte's classroom many, 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 many times, I have never had the privilege of seeing her tell any of her famous stories. Um, <laughs> And I am sorry that I have missed them, but uh, she was recently voted by the students, I think in the last issue of the Cape Insight, as Cape Elizabeth High School's best teacher storyteller. Um, so she brings many, many dimensions, and as with Dwight as well, she's a hard person to, for anybody to follow, but congratulations. I know uh, Charlotte's gonna be doing a lot of traveling and is very excited about the opportunities that uh, this next phase of her life is going to bring on. So Charlotte, thank you so much. just like to, on behalf of the board, um, thank all of you for your, um, I think it's almost two decades of combined years of service to our district when we add up how many years that this, um, this, two decades. no, two, two centuries, <laughs> two centuries, yeah, like 20 years. Work. <laughs> I, know. I know, I am sorry, um, yes, two centuries. Um, of combined years of service, um, and we are so deeply grateful to each of you. You've made a tremendous difference um, by the giving of your time and your talents to the children 
um, and the staff of our town. Um, and it's because of people like you that our district continues to be known not only for the strong academics, but for thoughtful innovation and inspiring instruction and organization. So thank you so much. Um, just a, a heartfelt thank you to all of you um, for giving yourself, um, giving up of yourselves to nurture um, our students and strengthen our district. You'll be missed tremendously. And while I hope you enjoy your time away from us, I hope you'll come back and visit. Um, and best of luck to each of you. You've earned the time and um, we are deeply, deeply grateful. So um, to show you how deeply grateful we are, <laughs> we have some cookies and fruit. <laughs> No, no, really. I know it's a dream, but yes. <laughs> and some ginger ale. I think. <laughs> so, well, we, we went all out, didn't we? We really did. So, you, yes, paper napkin. Only the best brand. That's right. And they're colored too. They're not just white. Um, that's right, that's right. So we're going to take a brief break. Um, I, I would like to ask the retirees if they would mind gathering up here. I'd like to get a picture. Um, and then you can enjoy your cookies. Uh, <laughs> and take Only one home. One person. Only one <laughs> person, you'll see. There goes dinner. And um, then we'll come back and finish the meeting. And my vice chair has graciously agreed to finish the meeting for me. Um, so we'll take a 15-minute um, break.
Exactly. Okay, so now that our audience is substantially diminished, um, we'll, move, we'll move forward through the rest of our agenda. Um, we are on item um, number six, um, communi communications. And do we have a report from Gail Schmader? Um, included in your packet was a report from Gail Schmader. Gail's unable to join us. She's um, recovering um, from, a, from an injury, but she is um, doing well and provided us with a very comprehensive report. But I'd like to point out that um, during the past year, the school district had over 950 volunteers who provided over 19,000 hours of service, volunteer service to the district, worth, in her estimation, approximately $280,000. Um, and those include um, parent volunteers, community members and grandparents, and students as well. So our, um, I, I just want to extend on behalf of you know, the, the faculty and staff of the school district our tremendous thanks, both to Gail for the many hours she puts in in coordinating these services, but in particular to the volunteers who have given so much of their time. And that's $280,000 worth at a, at a um, at hourly wage. rate. Yeah, <laughs> right, at minimum yes. wage. I'm sure our volunteers are, are worth much more, but. Um, Absolutely, that is a low end that. estimate, I would say. Um, okay, so we'll move on from there to the superintendent's report. And I will keep this very brief as well, given um, the length of the agenda. But uh, as we move into the end of the school year, there are many wonderful traditions and celebrations ranging from um, the, the fourth grade um, recognition night and the <coughs> kindergarten picnic and eighth grade recognition, which was held last night, and graduation, which was um, a wonderful day, a wonderful afternoon on Sunday, um, awards nights. We have step up days, report cards. Um, just a, a myriad of yearbooks, um, a myriad of end of year activities, and um, all of those are due to hard work that occurs during the year. And um, you know, again, I, I just appreciate the many hours that our staff put in, our administrators, our volunteers, the support that parents provide at home. Um, you know, every year we get to celebrate the many accomplishments and look forward to um, the future of our students. And, uh, you know, some of them leave us every year to go off into the world. And we're very proud of um, the young people that we send out there. So um, the other, another piece I'd like to point out is that we had two eighth graders, Allison Stewart and Alexandra Demeter. Um, who are honored today at um, Blaine House as recipients of the Maine Youth Excellence in Art Awards. So our congratulations to them and also to Marguerite Lawler Rohner, their art teacher at the middle school, who um, is very proud. She's had a wonderful um, year of student accomplishments, I would say. Um, and um, I, I think I'll end there. <laughs> the, the list could be quite lengthy, but I'm going to stop. OK. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, so we'll move on to item seven, new business. Item 7A, consideration to approve an unpaid leave of absence. Do I have a motion? Uh, I move that we consider to approve an unpaid leave of absence for a high school teacher during the 2012-2013 school year. Do I have to name the name at this juncture? You certainly can. Um, go ahead, Liz. Yep. Uh, the leave of absence is for Mary Hart. Um, art teacher at the high school. Is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion about this? Um, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for Mary Hart to stretch her wings and, and gain some really valuable experience at Bowdoin in her time away and come back and enrich the program here at Cape Elizabeth. I'm excited for it. David? I'd just like to make, make a comment. We discussed this and um, uh, we struggled a bit with the precedents and, and, and this issue in general, but we decided uh, in our discussions what swayed me was, was one, uh, it was a wonderful opportunity, first and foremost. Secondly, the uh, going to Bowdoin, which is where she will be for a year, is not really, it, it's clearly a one-year position because the person she's replacing is on sabbatical. So the chances of giving her a leave to go to another place and risk not having to come 
back is minimal. And I think that distinguishes this particular leave of absence from some of the others we've considered in the past. It makes it uh, clearly tip the balance and scale uh, to, uh, on the scales of she will return and she will return enriched. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, okay, all in favor? All right, um, 7B, consideration to approve personnel nominations. Um, should we just handle this as a slate? Yes, although if you wish to name those individuals, you could do that, or you could... Why don't we name, why don't we name, these are, there's some significant positions here, so why don't, if someone wouldn't, would, this is the kind of job we typically give to you, I think, reading long. Sure. Long I, I David, did you want to read it? Would you like me to make the motion? <laughs> I'd be happy. I'd like, I'm, I'm willing to see this one. Okay. Uh, I move that we consider to approve the following personnel nominations for the 2012-2013 school year. Heather Geike for grade five teacher, Lisa Axelrod, instruction support teacher in middle school, Kristen Arbor, grade five teacher, Jeffrey Davis, speech language pathologist, Pond Cove, Katrina Edwards, instructional support teacher, Pond Cove, um, Sean Turley, high school social studies teacher for a one year temporary term, Laura Ellis, RTI executive functioning services teacher, middle school, Karen Ferry, grade three teacher, Pond Cove. Sarah Adams, grade three teacher, Pond Cove. Eric Kramer, technology coordinator, district-wide. Douglas Purley, assistant principal, middle school. Kelly Hassan, principal, Pond Cove Elementary. Thank you. Do I have a second? <laughs> In tradition. Did you have something? Uh, well, I, I was asked um, just to sort of outline hiring procedures um, oh, thank you. So that, that people have an understanding of that. But um, we, we begin with sort of the advertising of positions, uh, which is crafted usually by the administrator um, in charge of the department where the opening is. Uh, move to screening of applications, and screening um, generally involves a team, um, which sometimes serves as the interviewing committee, sometimes those are separate. But um, administrators, teachers, in some cases, particularly for administrators, we add parents, school board members, um, a rather wide cross-section of people are involved in that process. The screening committee then selects people to interview. There, there's an interview process. Sometimes that's one round, sometimes that's multiple rounds of interviews. Um, then um, a, a designee is responsible for doing reference checks. Um, criminal history checks. Uh, oh, yeah, criminal, <laughs> criminal history checks. I take for granted because they're the law, but we do those as well, absolutely. Um, making sure that we've verified transcripts, um, degrees, certifications, that we then, um, the, again, the hiring administrator fills out paperwork, um, which is passed on to our business administrator for review to make sure that we've placed the person on the appropriate step on the salary scale. Um, it comes to me for review to make sure that all the reference checks have been completed, that you know, all, all of these um, pieces that I just outlined are in order. Um, I have individual meetings with every um, finalist for positions, and then it moves to the board. I make final recommendations to the board for approval. So, um, you know, in some cases, these, this process can go on for a month um, from start to finish. In some cases, it's longer than that, but um, it's certainly a comprehensive process and involves countless hours of time on behalf of um, teachers, administrators, and um, as I say, school board members and um, parents. David? Uh, I'd like to add to that. I was one who asked her to uh, Meredith, to give that summary, because I think it's important for the public to understand that this is a very detailed, lengthy, and exhaustive process, and exhausting as well. Um, people aren't picked for the school system lightly. Um, you expertly explained the process, but I also wanted the, the public to understand that the school board was heavily involved, and in, not only involved in many times being on the review committees, uh, I'm still on, I think, at least one, um, but also, we get an extensive packet of large amounts of information from resumes, reference checks, uh, a detailed 
procedural sheet in terms of uh, information. Um, um, and every school board member reads it. I know it took me at least, maybe I'm a slow reader, but I don't think so. Uh, I think it's probably ended up being about 90 to 100 pages of material on these people. Um, in our executive session, required by law to be an executive session, we, all members of the school board, ask substantive uh, questions, hard questions. Um, and Meredith uh, was on top of all of it, had detailed knowledge about every single candidate. Um, this was done uh, on a, a based on evidence, not anecdotal uh, information. Although we rely on our district, district team leadership to a large degree, I for one, and I know my school board member, fellow, fellow and, and other school board members do the same, we, we do do our job and we do review everything and we do take it seriously. And um, there are other aspects of this that, uh, just to mention one other one, um, it has to be signed off on by the, the uh, usually the principal of the school administrator, the uh, business manager, uh, the superintendent. The superintendent has to either review or uh, actually interview every single candidate. We have to sign off on vote for it in approval. And understand that the, even the business manager part is detailed. Every single person, every single that, that gets chosen, what they're offered requires an analysis by the business manager in terms of, of what the union contract requires, how many years they put in, what kind of uh, educational background they have, uh, what's their experience. There's a formulaic approach um, based on the contract, which is market-based. And if it's, there's in the contract involved, there is a, a relative market analysis done. So it, and then the salary is assigned, and then it's checked to see whether it fits within our budget. So none of these, both substantively and educationally, as well as economically, uh, heavily um, evaluated to make sure that not only are they quality people, but it fits within our preset budget um, that's already been voted on by the town. So I just haven't spent well over 10 to 15 hours this weekend and today and tonight on this. I'm sure everybody put in the same, and I want to assure people that this was done completely and thoroughly. Holding Exhibit A, which are the hiring procedures, which are also, <laughs> this is also a document that was created and approved by the board several um, years ago. So. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, I don't have a, a succinct uh, discussion as David's, but I would like to say. <laughs> That's called um, sarcasm. <laughs> I, you know, I think it's an exciting time for the district. Uh, you know, fortunately, we've had uh, great leaders um, like Tom Eismeyer and uh, Gary Lenoy to, to lay the foundation um, for, for continued development for the district. I know in the last, uh, I guess, year and a half, we would have had, uh, you know, four to five major uh, leadership positions where we're, we have a new hire. So um, I think it, um, it's an exciting time. <clears throat> uh, it also coincides with the new mission and vision statement. So although there's a lot of change, um, there's a great basis uh, to, to continue to move forward. And there will be opportunities uh, for the public um, you know, to get to know, uh, you know the, new, the new leaders. And um, I also want to thank those in the public that participated in the interview committees, that all the stakeholders uh, had a voice. And uh, it was a very um you know thorough process as david had had discussed so i'm just excited about the future for the schools and uh, we all look forward to to m working and, and meeting um the teachers and some of the new uh, members of the dlt and if i may i just wanted to add to that with being on the committee to for the uh, new assistant principal at the middle school um, filling john chasey's shoes was not an easy task definitely a challenge and I have high hopes that our candidate, um, Doug Perley, will have um, a great go of it. He's got a great mentor in the school system in Steve Connolly, and I'm excited to see the transition happening there. Thank you. And, and thank you to board members um, and administrators and, and teachers and parents who served on these interview committees. I know that, um, uh, as David said, the process is, is extensive and, and sometimes um, lasted all day. There were interviews, um, committees scheduled to meet for full day sessions, and there were there are people on those committees who who, who are 
have many other responsibilities and, and uh, so their time uh, and service is very much appreciated. And those numbers weren't included in the volunteer hours, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> it would double them. Why, why are we not included in that? I'm not sure. Um, you have to sign the little book at Pond Cove or wherever and put your not, you didn't do that. I've already done that. <laughs> of I've taken the course. And thank you, Meredith, because um, I think you're a member of almost all of those committees and, and uh, it's a tremendous amount of time. So I too am excited about the, the candidates and, and um, appreciate everybody's service in selecting them. Vote. All in favor? Okay, uh, the item everybody's been waiting for. Um, <laughs> item seven. If we take it, it as a slate, it should be C. Eight, should be eight, C. Eight a, or should take it be it seven? It should be seven C. Seven C. Okay. Um, so the the policy committee has been meeting, uh, as you know, to review the the policy manual, um, which I noticed the other day when Meredith got out the state law book, the state law on education book is about three times as thick as the state's book on education laws. But, but the print is slightly larger. <laughs> yeah, the print is larger. Um, so we've been meeting to review those policies, um, to update the policies, particularly um, starting with the ones that are required by law. Um, and to um, move out of the policy manual, if possible, and into administrative procedures, some policies that we don't think need to be board level um, policies. So what's before us tonight is um, the first list of policies um, that are, again, we're reviewing those that are at, as high, highest priority that are required by law. Um, this is the first list. It's policies uh, that begin with the letter A through the letter E, and then two policies um, that are, um, that we need to have in place uh, before the beginning of the next school year, July 1st. Um, those are JKAA and JKAA-R. And then we are recommending um, six policies for, for deletion um, and those would be, again, covered by administrative procedures. Um, and this is just the first reading. Um, so these will be back in front of the board for, um, for second reading. So there's no vote, vote required on these tonight. Do you need a motion? No. Yeah. Are there any questions or discussions? I just want to make a comment. I want to compliment the policy committee for this. I counted 23 policy slash rules that you reviewed and edited, and I thought you did an excellent job. And I will say this publicly. It's the first time I've gone through this many things and I did not have a single correction or comment or suggested change, not one. That's, it, <laughs> wow. I, I think genetically, I didn't think I was capable of that, but apparently I am. This is a great job you did. It really was an excellent job. And, I, well, I think you and we're glad to know you're capable of it. <laughs> <laughs> I did twitch a lot, but I managed to stop. Well, and a large thank you to Ian Chapman, I believe. Yes. I'm um, Drummond and Woodson, who's guiding us through this process. OK. So if that's it for that, we're on to. It's officially D. It's D. Seven D. D. Consideration to approve the following high school co-curricular staff nominations. May I have a motion? Take that as a slate. Or? Yes, we can take it as a slate. I move we approve the um, listed high school co-curricular staff nominations for the 2011-2012 school year in seven. D of tonight's agenda. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? This is just a, uh, a reallocation, right, Meredith? Of That's correct. The robotic stipend was built into the co-curricular stipends that the board approved as part of the budget process. 
prior to the start of the 11-12 school year. Um, this allocation is based on the amount of time that these, each of these individuals spent contributing to the robotics program on Saturdays. Thank you. Any other questions for discussion? All in favor? Okay, so on to 7E. Um, I move that we consider to approve the proposed Pond Cove team leader co-curricular stipend to $3,570 in the 2012-2013 school year. So you move that we approve it? Yes, please. Okay. Second? Um, any discussion? David? Go ahead, David. I'll let you know. I'll defer you. Michael? I just had a question on the, um, the, because um, the budget, we had just completed the budget. Now, this, is this, uh, I know we say sometimes there might be dollars that we reallocate, but one uh, concern I have of that, we may reallocate it from another area, that that year we may not have that need, but the next year, if that program has a need, you've actually you know, built in um, a, a future increase. Um, so you know, maybe this may not be the example, but I know sometimes maybe as a board practice, if we say we're reallocating it um, from one area to another, if that area we're reallocating from next year has, needs those resources where we've committed to the program. So um, you know, I think we need to be cautious about um, you know how how we do that because um, you're you're building in future budget increases that maybe weren't um, necessarily discussed in totality during the budget process. So I don't know if it's applicable in this scenario, but if it is a proposed increase, um, you know I was just curious why this wasn't part of the budget discussion. Did you want to address that? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, you'll see um, in your, included in a packet was a memo dated June 1st. The co-curricular steering committee uh, met this year. And Meredith, could you tell? I've been trying for five minutes to find that in a thick pack. Tell me about where it is because I was trying to. No, because I pulled it out of it's, the packet. It's after policy in mind. Okay, I just found it. I opened it by chance to it. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, the co-curricular steering committee met earlier in the year in advance of the budget cycle and made um, budgetary adjustments and recommendations at that time. The issue of the job descriptions for um, uh, PLC leaders and team leaders at the individual schools were discussed at that time, but at that time um, no specific proposal was made. There was a discussion with the co-curricular steering committee that administrators would have uh, additional conversations about those proposals. Um, those conversations occurred. Um, there was conversations with staff, which included an amendment to the job description for the Pond Cove um, team leader position, and then that information was brought back to the co-curricular steering committee. It's not new funding. This is part of the funding that was included in the budget. Um, the school board has the opportunity each year to review the budget for co-curricular positions, as will the co-curricular steering committee on an annual basis. These funds are reallocation from within the co-curricular lines from the SST positions, and the SST positions um, formally met out side of the school day, um, the structure of that has changed so that there are um, two individuals who have some additional responsibilities as SST um, leaders, one for sort of upper elementary and one for lower elementary. Um, but the additional positions that had been budgeted for SST based on the prior structure are no longer needed. Um, if that's not clear, Tom can elaborate a little bit on um, how that structure has changed. But it's, it's not new money, it's a reallocation of the funds that were budgeted for those positions. Um, I have a Steven? question. It, it's a similar one to Michael's. I do have a concern that after we've approved the budget, which isn't just in totality, but also each line item, and if a line item isn't really needed, we might have allocated it to something completely different than mm -hmm. Pond Cove uh, leadership team. And I, I personally, I, I will vote for this, but I want to make it clear this is a one-time allocation. It, it should not be permanent. We're free next year to allocate any way we want. And, and I, I do have a problem, and I, and I do have a, I guess I'll, I'll say it as mildly as I can, but I'm concerned that 
after a budget's passed and after we look at each line item, then all of a sudden there's a change. And I think he just said that this change was thought of before we started the budget process. So it should have been brought to us as part of the budget process, not afterwards. And yes, it's not a huge sum. Yes, it's not necessarily the world, an earth-shaking item, but I don't like that precedent. And I, I much prefer to have, when, when we approve line items or items that we're going to fund, it be done in the context of an entire budget. And if we, I don't like changing after we've had that vote. And I'm not, first of all, what's an SST? Student support team. Okay, and it looks like from our, our memo that's being allocated, the, the, some of that money was, was to go to middle school and high school. It's now all going to Pond Cove? No, it's only at Pond Cove. Okay, well, this memo would indicate otherwise, but because um, it implies that, that, that uh, well, anyways, I, I want to go on record of expressing the same concern, uh, uh, probably a stronger concern than, than Michael, but a similar concern, and that is I prefer to have things explained and justified at budget time. And if it really isn't necessary, because we don't need SSTs, we might have put that money into, I don't know, anything. Now we're being asked to put it into Pond Cove leadership. I don't doubt that it's a good allocation, but I think it should be done prior to, as part of the budget, not now. Yeah, I, I appreciate that point, and certainly this is only a recommendation coming from the co-curricular committee. It's understood that this is a, a board decision. Um, I will say that the conversation with, S, with the co-curricular steering committee was really not about SST at that time. The, position, the discussion was really about how the scope of team leader responsibilities have changed and ironing out those pieces. The um, changes to the SST structure weren't realized, I would say, until uh, early May perhaps when that particular piece was finalized. Um, so uh, it, it is I, I, certainly I, the board's prerogative. I, I will support it, but um, I, I want to express my own personal view about caution about this type of line item changes after something's been passed. I, I just either do it prior, as part of the budget and we keep it, or if we find that the sums of money are not necessary, then we pull in reserve and figure out what to do with it next year. But I'm, I will support it, but I just don't like this as a precedent. Anyone else? I, g I guess I would say um, in, in response or th that, that, that I think that, that to, to imagine that the budget as in, you know, envisioned by the school board in, in, um, you know, in, in, in April um, or February is, uh, you know, is going to serve throughout the entire next, the period of the next 18 months, um, you know, without any changes in allocation based on the, the actual demands on the, on the ground, uh, is, a, is a, a little bit idealistic about how budgets work and that, that there has to be um, a certain amount of flexibility to, to make changes um, based on, we're, we are a public school and there will be, we don't know, for example, how many kindergartners will show up at our door next year. And we may need to make changes to, to um, reflect the, the, the demands. Um, and and I, th I think, you know, Meredith makes a good point, which is that the committee, the steering committee is coming to the board um, to request this change. Uh, I, I don't think it's unreasonable that the administration be able to um, make this kind of change when, when they see that there's a need or a change in the demand. May I respond? Yeah. Um, I don't disagree that a budget is a living document. I absolutely agree with that. And I do believe that's why we have contingency funds. That's why we have reserves. That's why we do have large line items. You can shift within that line item to, to face various needs. But this one comes close to being a need a defined need for which we we're going to fund, and all of a sudden, magically, it becomes not a, a defined need anymore, but we really need it somewhere else. That comes close to not a unanticipated need, like increase in kindergarten, or a teacher all of a sudden, five times as many kids as you thought were going to sign up for biology, so we need extra money for a part-time biology teacher. This, this seems to be a change in function uh, that could have been predicted is what it seems like to me. And since we have scarce resources, I prefer to have um, maybe, you know, 
it wouldn't have changed. But maybe given other needs for a 3570, we might have allocated somewhere else. That's my point. Not that it's not, we can't do it, not that it's not a living document, but I, I find these things should be granted sparingly and, um, and, and with the understanding that preferably everything's done up front and we put all the pieces together as best we can there. And this doesn't seem to be something that at least appears to me that couldn't have been anticipated prior there too. I mean, that's my point. Okay. I would still support it. All right. Any other comments? All in favor? Okay. Item F. Consideration to approve athletic and co-curricular staff nominations. Do I have a motion? Can we do this as a slate? Yes. Then I move that we approve the following athletic and co-curricular staff nominations for the 2012-2013 school year as listed out in the um, Cape Elizabeth School Board business meeting minutes from the evening of June 12, 2012. Item 7F. Uh, Do we have a second? Well, go ahead. Hold on, sorry. I, I don't Michael? think she described the motion yes. correctly, but they listed in our agenda, not in board minutes meetings. I'm so, I, I apologize. I Will you accept the motion as amended I by Mr. Hillman? I accept the motion as amended by our fellow board member, David Hillman. Meredith? I believe David had one further amendment to offer because he noted that um, omitted from the list of coaches, um, although included on the backup documentation, was um, the name of Andrew Lupian as an assistant cross-country mm -hmm. coach for the high school. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to amend the motion to approve um, the listed uh, individuals for the listed um, co-curricular uh, staff positions on 7F of our agenda adding Andrew Lupin, L-U-P-I-E-N, as assistant cross-country coach for both boys and girls for the high school. Does the person who made the motion have to accept the amendment? No, you, just, you vote on the amendment or... As amended. As amended, you can do okay. it that way. All in favor of the motion as amended? One discussion? I We're only we approving the motion as well, amended. No. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought the amendment? we were done with, is there more discussion? Are you approving the amendment or the motion as amended? The motion as amended. Then I do have a short bit to discuss. Okay. I just wanted noted um, that Jeff Thorak put a great deal, great deal of effort. Only, there's only two new positions. Virtually all of them are existing uh, people. Of the two new positions, uh, we were given information on one and uh, the other one is um, I, I believe highly qualified as well. Uh, I do want people to understand that even though the vast majority of people are being reappointed, uh, Jeff Thorak does do a thorough review of existing people and it's not automatic. One, he attends almost all of, as much as he can of the various varsity events and observes the coaches. He constantly gets reports from parents. He's had meetings with team members about the existing coaches. And I believe he's implemented, or if not fully, but close to fully, a exit interview uh, uh, on an anonymous basis with all team members of their views of their coaches, a detailed questionnaire. So a lot of thought goes into, um, effort goes into before somebody is simply just blanketly renominated as well as people chosen. So I just thought for the record that should be known. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? G, right? Mm -hmm. Item G, consideration to grant the superintendent authority to hire over the summer. Do I have a motion? Yes, I move that we grant the superintendent of schools authority to hire over the summer. Second? Second. Got that? Yeah, I will just say that while you grant the authority to hire, please know that it is my responsibility to bring to you all the information on people who are hired so that you have the opportunity to affirm that um, at your next 
business meeting, whichever business meeting occurs after the hiring. Uh, let me ask a question then, if I may. When you say affirmed, I mean, have they been hired and a contract formed and we can then undo that contract? Or no, the, you're, you're granting me the authority to hire, but right. I, it is my responsibility to provide you with all of the information about those people who have been hired. You're, you're in essence, giving me the authority to provide them with contracts. I, I just want to clarify that because our affirmation is, is nice, but it's not going to change what you've done. No. I just want to correct. make that clear. So when you were granted you authority, you'll give us information. We may not like it, but we can't undo it. That's I, fine with me. I, I have a, one agree. other question. Um, there's one administrative position still to be filled, right? Yes. Community think, services. Yeah, and I think that is the intent um, for the board to have another meeting next week. The board is planning to have a special business meeting, and the hope would be to fill that position at that time. Um, based on my um, communication with um, board chair and vice chair, um, it's my understanding that um, they would prefer that the board have the opportunity to approve any administrative hires that occur during the summer so that while I might fill a support staff position or a um, teacher position if a vacancy were to occur, that in the event that well, we know we have an existing administrative opening, but in the event that we were filling any other administrative positions, that we would try to call a special board meeting for that purpose. Should we amend the, a motion to read, perhaps, <clears throat> to hire with the summer with the exception of any administrative positions? Uh, I, uh... <laughs> Why? I think you do have to amend the motion. As long as you promise to be able to pull a quorum together in a reasonable period of time for that purpose. But uh, uh, I think it sounds pretty good the way it is. I mean, there's always scenarios you could come up with. But well, I would move that we amend the, that the motion be to grant the superintendent of schools authority to hire over the summer with the exception of administrative positions, which would be taken to board for final approval. Either we do it or we don't do it. So I would move we amend the motion to state as I just said. No, I just said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you asked if we should amend it, and I just moved to amend it. All right, so the motion as amended. The question I have is, as Meredith is trying to get business done and we are out of, con um, out of reach, out of town, and can't get a quorum, um, the question would be, do we then have to re-vote to give Meredith permission? We couldn't, because we don't have a quorum. We wouldn't have a right. quorum to re-vote. So what's a reasonable amount of time? In other words, <laughs> To not hold you up. How, lo how, how long, what's a reasonable amount of time to have a quorum? If we, if we can get, in other words. It, is it August 20, 20th no, or is I it July 1st? Is, Good question. I mean, I, 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 really, that's a tricky question to answer. I mean, at, at this point, we know we have a vacancy. We expect to be able to fill that and bring a nomination forward to the board. Um, at, a, at a special meeting that we've planned a tentative date for of um, next Wednesday. So, uh, you know, at, at, at this point, I don't have an immediate concern. Um, you know, if, if we have a vacancy that occurs and, and it occurs two weeks prior to the start of the school year, being able to pull the board together fairly quickly would be important if it occurs July 1st. Uh, we have a little bit of a window. I mean, so I, 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 I certainly don't intend to be flipped by giving that response, but I, I'm not uncomfortable with the motion either way. I'm not anticipating um, any, any issues. I, I think we're making this w way too complicated. Right, we are. I don't think so. I'm we'll be clarifying it. Either we're giving or yeah, or I don't know that. Not. I mean, I, right, but, but all you'd say is, well, you know, I'm going to hire you, but it's contingent on a board approval. And I mean, there's, you know, there's that, that happens in virtually every hire. Why don't we uh, just vote on my amendment? If it gets voted down, fine. Then we have your original motion and we can vote it. Let's just get it over with. I, I moved my okay. motion, which was to amend uh, and grant the superintendent authority to hire over the summer with the exception of 
uh, administrators, which would require board approval to finalize the contract. Let's vote on that, and if it approve it, great. If we say no, we go back to the original motion. It would, it would, that's okay with me. Is that consistent with rules to vote on that? Yes, that's how you do it on Robert's rule. You vote on the amendment first, then you vote on the original motion. Okay. Does everyone understand the amendment? What, just technically, does the phrase administrative, is that, I mean, is there any other position that you could conceive would be a administrator, or is there, are we using the technical precise definition for? I think we're referring to a specific bargaining unit. You're not asking. <laughs> the administrative right. or department head um, right. position. I think administrator is generic, generically defined enough. Okay. I mean, that's All in favor of the motion as defined by Mr. Hillman? As amended. The amendment. As amended by Mr. Hillman. Four. Four. Opposed. All opposed. Motion passes four to two as amended. Okay, let's move on. Item H. I. H is no longer. That's right. So is it H or is it I? It will be I. Okay. Formerly G. <laughs> <laughs> Item I to approve the collective bargaining agreement with CEA, EdTech 2, and EdTech 3. Um, I move that we approve the collective <coughs> bargaining agreement for the Cape Elizabeth Education Association Educational Technicians 2 and Educational Technicians 3, dated July 1st, 2012 to June 30th, 2015. Seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, yes, I'd just like to uh, thank uh, the uh, representatives and the EdTechs uh, 2 and EdTechs 3 in the district. Um, you know, uh, education, there's always a lot of changes, and um, obviously they've seen, uh, there's been changes in, in their area this year, so I just wanted to thank them for their uh, professionalism and for their continued uh, dedication to student and student learning, and that um, it was a very uh, uh, supportive uh, discussions and negotiations. I just wanted to, uh, to thank them and recognize uh, their contribution to, uh, to the district. Thank you, Michael. Any other discussion? All in favor? All opposed? What was that? Everyone. That was everyone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just learning. Um, Jay. Uh, consideration to authorize a lease purchase for computer equipment. Do I have a motion? Sure. I, I move that we authorize. We vote to authorize $107,694.06 lease purchase agreement for computer equipment and related software and peripherals. Second. Thank you. I would Any? just like to say that had I known I didn't have to read the memo that came with this, I totally would have made that motion. <laughs> That's right. Last time, yeah, that's what we just do. That's a new. You might have made it. <laughs> that was my amazing. You might have made it better because he he moved to vote. We're we're actually moving to authorize, but that's all right. No, it's to vote to authorize. Yeah, it's technically we're moving to authorize. In any case, is there any <laughs> substantive discussion? <laughs> no. All in favor. Okay, is this really item two? It's really item eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, item eight, committee reports. Do we have any committee reports? Um, or negotiations. Are there any other committee? <laughs> policy and negotiation. Yeah. Okay, so the, the policy committee is um, is uh, meeting once again in August to continue its work on the policy manual, which I discussed earlier. 
um, policy committee chair requested a late start for the August meeting, it being August, so we're starting that meeting at 8 a.m. So it's a long meeting to get a serious amount of business done. That's an 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. meeting, and we're looking to move through a, a large volume of policies that um, that day, so that we have something to bring, something else to bring to the board for the August board meeting. Has that list of policies you're going to consider on that day gone out yet? Or has it? Has 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 the notice gone out as to what policies you're going to consider on that day gone out yet? No, but we could provide it. Could could you we could too? provide it? Well, you'll get a policy committee uh, um, meeting agenda in advance of the meeting. All school board members. Okay. Thank you. I believe. They've been yeah. to all board members. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and in terms of negotiations, I guess we have one more contract that's under negotiation. Um, that's that is um, with uh, two formerly two collective bargaining units, um, bus drivers, mechanics, uh, uh, bus drivers, maintenance, and custodians, um, who are merge and and food service, uh, who are merging into a single collective bargaining unit. Um, and those negotiations are ongoing. And so I guess that concludes committee reports. I, I didn't note legislative. David is the legislative committee. Did you? <laughs> yes, we, we are having our final meeting tomorrow morning at 830 with, um, I'm not sure who's exactly at the laundry list is showing up, but we're going to have Jane Herbley, uh, Kim Monahan, and I don't know if. Possibly a member of the Education Committee, but that's not confirmed. We will provide, if anybody wants to attend, an update of what's happened this year in terms of legislation and what might happen in the future, which would be helpful at this point. And I believe it's in the um, Jordan Conference Room. Is it? If it's not in the Jordan Conference Room, it will be in my office. Okay. <laughs> I believe it was posted for Jordan. Is that a meeting that Nolan would be able to attend? If he chooses. <laughs> if you'd like to join us tomorrow morning at 8.30, you are absolutely welcome. He just finished his finals. You're going to make him get up by 8.30? <laughs> Maybe he's just up, right? Uh, no, I don't have up. any finals to make. You were looking to fill your day. Can't wait. <laughs> we might still be here. <laughs> um, is there a finance committee report? I noticed in the minutes that you were... You had asked us last time for agenda I, items for I, next fall. I, I'm waiting for a little breather for the school board, and I'll, I'll send that out. Uh, okay. Once we're all uh, completed with some more higher priority uh, tasks. But thank you for remembering that. I will send it out in the next few weeks. Okay. Item nine. School board agenda requests. Are there any agenda requests? Okay, item 10, announcements of upcoming meetings that haven't already been announced. Seeing none. It's best one's next. <laughs> okay, adjournment. Do I have a motion? I move that we adjourn. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Six. Okay, I can amend Thank that. Thank you. <laughs>